Danger Dolan. From horribly bad horror games to awkwardly controlling platformers, we get 15 games that ruined our hope for their franchises. Number 15. Quake 4. So Quake is the quintessential arena shooter series, except for Quake 4, which prioritized consoles over PC gaming, making it a sluggish and uninspired mess. The movement was so slow that it made Halo CE look like a racing game. The story had no outstanding moments, and the level design left a lot to be desired. Quake will now live on as a glorified browser game since Quake Live is actually a more popular and more loved game which is probably because it's almost a carbon copy of Quake 3 Arena. Number 14. Dead Space 3. So when Dead Space first came out, it surprised people on its high quality survival horror gameplay. The sequel wasn't as good, but it was still a great game. But then came the eldritch horror that is Dead Space 3. That's not to say that Dead Space 3 is a bad game, but with microtransactions, a focus on co-op, and an unhealthily large amount of shooting marines, this direct sequel didn't even feel like a spiritual successor. Even though Dead Space 4 is in development, the hopes for this game being anything like the original is low. However, it is sure to have some great improvements like 50 easy ways to give your credit card details to EA. Number 13. Metroid Other M. Now while Dead Space 3 wasn't a bad game, Other M most certainly was. Even if you ignore the abhorrent story, which could be summed up as Samus is now a wimp and apparently she has a child complex. Using a D-pad in a three-directional space, little to no exploration, overly long scanning sections, having to stop everything you're doing to fire a missile, these are just some of the flaws included in this game. That isn't to say that there's no hope for another good Metroid, but Other M's lackluster performance has made everyone anxious as to whether or not the game will be another F. Number 12. Duke Nukem Forever. Ah, Duke Nukem, everyone's favourite hero of vulgarity. Everyone was convinced this game was a complete vaporware for the longest time and now everyone wishes it remained that way. This game suffers from developers trying too hard to deliver on what they think the audience wants, and apparently they thought that we wanted an embarrassing crude action hero that restores his ego by running away and drinking himself to oblivion. Story elements aside, the gameplay doesn't have a lot going for it either. The shrink ray RC racing was terrible and the shooting felt sloppy at best. But hey, at least you get to slap a babe's ass, right? Number 11. Star Wars The Old Republic. So, Knights of the Old Republic was a much loved RPG series that took place in a distant past of the Star Wars universe. The story in both of the games was great, which is a shame because most of Star Wars The Old Republic story could be outwritten by a monkey on a typewriter. The worst part isn't this story though, because it actually has some okay moments. The blatant copying of the worst aspects of WoW's combat and questing systems is what killed it. Now that SWOTOR is released and EA has devised a way to milk its remaining customers for all they're worth, there won't be another Knights of the Old Republic game for a long, long time. Number 10. Command & Conquer 4. Command & Conquer is one of the most well-known and beloved RTS series and EA acquiring the IP ended up just about as well as you would expect. C&C 4 removed base building, added unlocks in multiplayer, and you have to choose if you want to be offense, support, or defense at the start of a match, forcing you to limit your options. This game was so bad that not even EA fanboys liked the crime against gaming wrapped up in a beloved franchise's name. Number 9. Earthworm Jim 3D. So this game had issues in the worst possible way. It controls more awkward than a nerd trying to hit on the hot girl. This game did so poorly that despite how popular the previous entries were, it ended the franchise for good. No more will we enjoy using completely literal pocket rockets to save humanity. It's a shame that the series didn't continue because who doesn't love collecting udders of lucidity to restore a worm's sanity? Number 8. Red Faction Armageddon. So Red Faction is a series best known for its environment destruction and large levels. Armageddon, however, is best known for small underground levels and mediocre third person action. THQ was just listening to the fans who complained that the levels were too empty, of course, they didn't realise that maybe people wanted more stuff in the world instead of turning it into a mediocre, run-of-the-mill, stale old fart. This game did so poorly that it was one of the reasons that THQ went bankrupt, thus destroying any hope that Red Faction could ever return to its former glory. Number 7. Dino Crisis 3. So you love dinosaurs, you love spaceships, well, Dino Crisis 3 is for you. 
As long as you don't mind a mediocre game with a camera that controls like a 15 wheeler with no power steering and dinosaurs that respawn for no good reason, the idea of shooting dinosaurs on a spaceship does sound fun at first, but it doesn't really fit the Dino Crisis MO, which is survival horror game where you're hunted by dinosaurs in their natural environment. To nail it in as to just how badly Dino Crisis 3 affected the franchise, Capcom never released a Dino Crisis Portable 3G Ultimate Arcade HD Edition, not even once. Number 6. Fear 3 is more proof that a game doesn't need to be bad to kill a franchise. All it needs to do is deviate too far from the previous game's direction. So this game has solid shooting, okay set design, and you know, mediocre AI. There are certainly worse games that performed better, but since Fear 1's AI was so well designed, and the gunplay was so great, it's, it's hard to compare the two. Not to mention the fact that the game barely has any horror elements past the obligatory shock scares that don't really do anything apart from make you feel like you got a static shock whilst walking into a cobweb. Number 5. Tony Hawk Ride Speaking of looking like you need serious help, Tony Hawk Ride is designed to make you fall in your ass and wonder why you can't feel your lower half anymore. So the Tony Hawk series used to make you feel like a superman, but the motion control renditions just made you feel like an idiot standing on a board in your living room hoping no one's watching. Even though Tony Hawk Ride did so poorly, Activision thought they could release a sequel to recoup of the loss of the original. The sequel did so poorly that even E.T. for the 2600 looked like a success in comparison. Number 4. Perfect Dark Zero. This game only made its success because it was a launch title with little to no competition. The graphics were terrible, the AI was simpler than a game maker game, and the story had less hooks than a crab boat. The original was so beloved that this game could have been a system seller. Unfortunately, Rareware post Microsoft purchase lacked what it took to make anything meaningfully resembling the original. Not even its multiplayer and high Metacritic score could save this game. The only way this game will make a return is via a reboot in a couple of years time. Number 3. Paper Mario Sticker Star Many people were disappointed by the Wii Paper Mario, but in comparison to that game, Sticker Star is a masterpiece. I can't imagine removing the RPG aspect from Paper Mario even looked good on paper, especially with how many games have RPG elements these days, but still they carried through with it. Sticker Star didn't even have an overworld, instead they replaced it with a, a level based system that belongs in a platformer. Hopefully Nintendo are smart enough to just make another thousand year door next, but they probably won't. Number 2. Dungeon Keeper for iOS and Android Nobody is even sure if this game has fun gameplay since you can barely do anything without paying copious amounts of money or waiting an incredulous amount of time. This is perhaps the worst and most draconian freemium game, not only does it have nothing to do without paying, the game also taunts you while it asks for your hard earned money. To top it all off, if you want to rate the game anything lower than 5 stars on the app store, after it prompts you for its rating they ask you to email them about just how bad the game is, thus giving the game a manufactured high rating. Number 1. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Definitive evidence that a game doesn't need to be bad to sink a franchise or cripple a company. Nuts and Bolts disappointed many fans and turned Rare into the soulless Kinect game producing machine that they are. Microsoft was so convinced that gamers didn't want a platformer that they decided to scrap the mostly finished Banjo 3 and merge it with a vehicle construction game. This is the most soul crushing proof that having hype for a game under a new producer is just setting yourself up for disappointment. That's it for this countdown and have a good one!